I think it's safe to say that Angry Birds Star Wars was the best and coolest crossover ever. I didn't give a crap about Star Wars, but all of a sudden this game came out, and I was sitting there watching the prequels. On paper, these two titles have almost nothing in common, but playing through the game makes you realize just how fun it's going to be. Following the story of the movies, even seeing the Jedi and the Sith point of view in the sequel, it's incredible. But my absolute favorite part is seeing each of my favorite characters as an Angry Bird. There's a lot of birdified Jedi out there, and some are combinations like Stella and Leia, and others are brand new like freaking Yoda Bird. So of course, in our long journey to rank every Angry Birds bird, we're going to look at every bird that ever existed in this franchise, including some I couldn't even find on the wiki. Exciting stuff today. I absolutely hate the weird way they combine the birds' names with the Star Wars characters' names, but at the same time, it's going to be way funnier to hear me say this crap. Don't worry, I'm going to call them all by their Star Wars names after this, but first, today we'll be ranking Red Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kabumi, Chuck, Ham Solo, Blue Squadron, Terabaka, c 3 Yoke, R2 Egg 2, Princess Stella Organa, Lando Birdissian, Yoda Bird, Mighty Millennium Falcon, Muff Tak, Nien Nun, Jawa Bird, Gungan, Plo Koon, Ki Adi Mundi, Yafar, Yellow and Red Security Officers, Captain Security Bird, Spies, Quail Gon Jin, Redkin Skywalker, Peck Mi Amidala, Moa Windu, Jar Jar Wings, Jedi Younglings, Captain Panaka, Kit Fisto, Wicked the Ewok, Ham Solo, Frozen and Carbonite, Ezra Bridger, Kanan Jarrus, Zebarelius, Harris and Dilla, Sabine Wren, and Chopper. God, these don't even make sense. Like R2 Egg 2? Moa Windu? Jesus. Without further ado, let's find out which of these birds are the ultimate Jedi, and which ones would be better off as some dead guy. Of course we have to start with Luke Skywalker, the Star Wars bird with the most different forms. We got Pilot Luke, Endor Luke, Jedi Luke, and most importantly, normal, normal Luke, the normal one. He probably has the most straightforward power as well, simply swinging his lightsaber. I'm sure Red appreciates getting any kind of power, even if it's not as cool as using the Force. While they definitely nailed the look of him, his power isn't anything too exciting and neither is he. His luscious locks aren't quite luscious enough to entice me. Nice try, Luke! Out of all the Star Wars birds, he is the most middle of the road, B tier. Obi-Wan has two different forms, his young and old version. Talk about luscious locks. And while others like Anakin had completely different powers, these two share the same one. Um, let's just say that the Force is with this one. <laughs> Although he canonically dies in Episode 4, thankfully he continues to appear throughout the first game. Having the abilities to use the Force as an Angry Bird is so much fun, and launching blocks across the screen always feels awesome. Plus, I already love bombs, so they won me over a while ago. Still, he's just not S tier for me. His design is great, and his power is fun, but I prefer others way more than him on this list. Don't worry buddy, you can still have a solid A tier. Well Chuck is voiced by Tom Kenny aka Spongebob, so already you're off to a great start. <laughs> Chuck and Han Solo are pretty much the same character already, so of course they got combined here. For the first time in Angry Birds history, Chuck did not have a power tied to his speed. Well, unless you count him shooting Greedo first. He's a basic little gun boy, with three straight shots. Lasers in this game bounce off of metal, so he's used a lot for puzzle levels. He has the most basic and boring power from the original game, other than maybe the blues. We will see Chuck again later on, so for now we'll stick Han Solo and B with Luke. Like I said, it feels like they wanted to have the blues here, but really didn't know how to have them here. They're virtually nameless characters known as the Blue Squadron, although I guess they are based on some named pilots like Wedge and Tilly's. They also get the same freaking power as always, just splitting up into three. In a game where they could have flown an X-Wing, or each had little guns, or just threw their helmets at the pigs, or just something, instead they got the same old power. I already don't care for the blues. They got done dirty, and they're going in D-tier. I mean, come on. Not only is this a more perfect mashup than Chuck and Han Solo, but it's two fan-favorite characters combining into the most awesome design ever. Seeing Terrence as Chewbacca, doing the Chewbacca roar, is one of the best things to come out of this crossover. If Terrence just became Chewbacca at this point in the series, I don't think anyone would have complained. I will say his power doesn't change much, his roar just pushes things as he collides with them, but it just doesn't matter. One of the easiest S tiers ever. I'm pretty sure they decided they wanted C-3PO to be just as annoying as ever. His power is to break into pieces, which on paper sounds like a better version of the blues or something, but in reality, it's the weakest, most useless crap I've ever had the displeasure of dealing with. And in the sequel, they somehow managed to make him worse, which, I mean, congratulations, I guess. 
Thankfully, he is relegated to bonus levels only, so you never have to deal with him ruining your chances in the main game. There's actually one level in Star Wars 2 that is super satisfying to use him in, but otherwise all of his parts just clutter into one spot making it impossible to break any blocks. He has a silver version as well, which is so similar I refuse to rank it separately. It splits into four pieces rather than six! Revolutionary, I know. The pieces are a bit heftier, so they deal more damage, which makes him better in my eyes. I'll never stop being annoyed by him though, which sucks because Medilla's make over here is really well done. C-3PO just looks perfect. This droid's a D tier. R2-D2, oh sorry, r 2 egg 2 my bad, is also strictly in bonus levels. His power is a little more enjoyable than C-3PO's, he gets to lightning strike all the pigs within range of him. It is nice to guarantee a pig as long as you are near it, but he just cannot break blocks. He's a nice one to end with, finishing up with the last couple pigs, but otherwise I just get annoyed too. I gotta say, his design is fun, since it's literally R2 but with an egg for a body. According to the character encyclopedia, they look harmless but hide the egg, which contains the force. It does what? I feel like that's a huge deal that could stop this war they keep talking about. R2, you could make star peace! You could make star friends! Star love! But oh no, the key to everyone's problem is in the stupid egg that hangs out with C-3PO exclusively. That's just crazy. Anyways, R2 is fine, but not great. C tier. Everybody, stop! My Daily Time did admire Stella in a bathing suit and Stella in a Princess Leia slave outfit is right now! Now shut up and let me admire! <sighs> Man, I can't freaking wait for tomorrow so I can admire Stella in a bathing suit and and Stella in the Princess Leia slave outfit again. While we wait, we might as well talk about her. Stella's had a very diverse set of powers and her appearances, and this one is no exception. She can grab anything she wants, as long as it's in her line of sight, and pull it towards her. This has a ton of uses and can be pretty strong at times. She looks great, her power is cool, she's pretty... I, I mean, pretty good. Uh, anyways, A tier. And then, Chuck did blackface. Look, that's not a joke. I'm not trying to make light of anything, that's just straight up what happened. To be fair, he is a bird, so his race doesn't really matter, but I still always felt weird about the choice. Regardless, it was pretty cool to have Lando be playable here. If only Nian Nam could have had the same treatment. His power is an evolution of Chuck's with a little spread shot action. It's virtually a better version of Chuck, which makes sense. I don't really know what power Lando would have had otherwise. He's alright. I'm more entertained by looking at this plush version more than anything. I'll say B tier. Yoda, bird. Yoda, bird. Yoda, bird. Yoda, bird. Move over, baby Yoda. It's bird time, baby. Yoda. Trust me, I contemplated doing this part in Yoda speak exclusively, but sometimes I draw the line at how cringy my videos can get. I love being cringy, but that's just on another level. Yoda bird appears in the first game, but he's old and dying, so they didn't force him to get launched by the slingshot. In the sequel, he has a brand new power, bouncing around like crazy. This sounds awesome, but in reality, it's really hard to do well with. Most levels he's in are going to take countless tries because of how random it can be. Plus, other characters like Kit Fisto have a better version of the same power, so it's hard to like this one. I do love the design, though. As a kid, I always imagined he was Hal, but the beak is clearly way too small. Seems like a missed opportunity, but it is also fun to see him as his own thing. He fits right in next to Obama Bird, honestly. Hashtag Yoda's my president. Hashtag A tier. The last playable character in the first game is the Mighty Millennium Falcon. You can't even be mad at this, it has Falcon in the name! So compared to Mighty Eagle, this is a super frustrating power up. You are not guaranteed to kill every pig, so even using this as a last ditch effort isn't always worth it. Thankfully, you keep the other birds to take out any remaining pigs, but that's still a pretty big deal. The lasers it shoots will destroy anything it touches, but man those things can be so unhelpful at times. The Millennium Falcon also looks like a freaking kid's toy now. Some little toddler is sitting there sucking on the slingshot while I try to get one of the stupid lasers to hit. I really do not like it, but it isn't the worst. C tier. In preparation for this video, I scoured the internet trying to find literally every bird that appeared in Angry Birds Star Wars. While watching the cinematic trailer, I came across this guy. He's not on the wiki, and I don't know who he's supposed to be, so I made a post asking you guys. And that's how I found out you're all a bunch of Star Wars nerds! Sure, yeah, you helped me find him in my time of need, but jeez, you guys knew the name and species of this thing? Man, I could never look at my audience again. I guess I don't have to explain who this is, because clearly everyone subscribed to me already knows, but I'm doing it anyways. This is Muftak. He's got four eyes, and he's, uh, he's from Star Wars. He's a regular at most Isley, so that's why he's in the trailer. 
It's funny that other than Laserbird's cameo, he is the only bird in that cantina that isn't a main character. Since we only have his design to rank him off of, I gotta say I love this guy. He looks awesome and I really wish he appeared in the game. Can't say he's S-worthy, but he made for a great story and I'm happy to have discovered him. A tier. Nian Nun showed up in a couple cutscenes in the last chapter of the story. He's a fun co-pilot, but birdified Nian Nun is pretty dang cursed. It's like a hairless cat made with a turkey and made this freak of nature. Sorry to all the Nian Nun heads out there, but this is just D tier. The Jawas were sadly never playable, but you were able to slaughter them on the pork side, so that's freaking sweet. They're kind of the shy guys of the series. I just want to know what they look like under that hood. Let's be honest though, they're probably just the hatchlings from the movie. I hate you hatchlings! Jawas are cute though. B tier. I freaking love Gungans. Sure, I've dunked on the prequels in the past, but George Lucas is a certified genius because he thought of Gungans. However, Angry Birds has pissed me off for the last time! We hardly get any funny Gungies to look at. Where are all the Gungies at, bro? Thankfully, there's a couple of Gungos to go through. One of them is Nass, who's got a lot of sass and sucks my ass, and then there's some generic Gungans you get to murder relentlessly like the Jawas. That picture of Nass actually pisses me off. That doesn't even look like him. But the regular Gunnigans are great. I will never forgive you for not having more Gungros, so they go and see. I know there are people out there that love Plo Koon. Don't act like you don't. But he's just weird as an Angry Bird. Well, no, he's always weird, let's be fair. But I don't want to see him like this. Muftag is cute, he's awesome. Not you, Plo Koon. Not you. D tier. Alright guys, new profile pic. What do you think? Yeah, moving forehead, uh, forward, uh, I'll be using this on all my social media. I don't know why, I just relate to this guy. It's honestly really forehead. Fortunate that I found this. Sorry, I don't mean that. It's more of a five head to be fair. Also, don't make this guy a silhouette. That's really unfortunate looking. Me and Kiati Mundi share a lot of similarities, but he looks like penis, so C tier. Okay, I know all of you have Star Wars shrines in your houses, but you do not know who Yaffer is. Stop lying, you cannot know this. I watched Star Wars Rebels and even I don't freaking recognize this freak. He's so unremarkable he ended up being scrapped from the game. He's in the files but he never made it through. Somehow he looks the most bird-like than any dang bird in this franchise, despite him originally looking like this. It's a cool design though, and definitely an improvement. C tier. Just for the sake of ranking everything, we have to include these generic security officer enemies. There's a red and yellow variant that may make me hungry for ketchup and mustard, but makes me oh so happy to ruthlessly decimate in game. Obviously these go in D tier. Oh boy, here we go. You just had to be different, didn't you? We just had to have three security officers. I am gonna scream, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna piss my pants maybe, but most importantly I'm gonna put the star excuse down in D tier. Honestly these spies are a pretty cute enemy in the rebels levels, especially alongside these Rodians. This is the first time I feel bad for killing them. Gonna do it anyways, <laughs> not like I'm not gonna take the chance to pop some birds, am I right? You're not gonna not kill birds if you get the opportunity, right? This is a fun enemy type though. How about B tier? <sighs> Sigh. Poor Qui-Gon Jinn. I finally understand why you have gone in your name now. It's rare to see an Angry Bird canonically die, but Qui-Gon gets that honor. I also like how he looks quite a bit. It's kind of based on Matilda, but really he's super unique. I like how a lot of the characters in Star Wars 2 look, and he is no exception. As for his power, he is the first bird you get, so obviously he takes the spot of Luke. While the power is nothing special, I love him a lot. He can go in B too. Not a lot of characters are going to get separated like young Anakin here. I don't really plan to just do every version of Anakin in one slot, but his power is so different that it would be weird to do that. Pod racing is the classic meme tied to young Anakin, so of course he gets to do it in this game. It's really awesome power, letting you go wherever you want on a level as long as there's nothing in the way. Anakin also gets dragged through whatever crap he can bypass, it's awesome. Young Anakin has a fun power, I like it. A tier. Wow, you're so edgy, Anakin. You're so cool and hot and deep and cool and I just love you, Anakin. If that's you, if you say that, unsubscribe! Just kidding, don't unsub! Oh my god, please, I didn't mean it! I love you! Ah, ah. All grown-up Anakin is pretty boring. He just reverts back to a lightsaber-swinging loser. So instead, I thought we'd take the spot to talk about telepods. I had the Anakin telepod, as well as a ton more, as you can see. I honestly forgot how many of these I had. It's pretty insane, actually. The birds are pretty cool, especially that Ewok, but man, the pigs are so much better. I am really looking forward to ranking the Star Wars pigs, because ones like Jabba and Grievous are just incredible. Did you guys have telepods? And if you did, which ones? If you had Anakin like me, you'll know he's pretty freaking boring. D tier. 
Also, yes, I know he has a third form and it's Darth Vader. I know, I know, I know! But he just uses the Force. It's just Darth Vader's power. I'll talk about it when I do him, okay? Okay, good. Goop, goop, goop. I thought Leia was hot. Goop, goop, goop. They call her Peck Me Amidala, huh? <sighs> I wish she'd peck me. Padme has a really strange power. It's basically the opposite of Leia's. She pushes objects with her beam rather than pulling them. I find the pull to be much more useful, but there are situations where this works. No matter how freaking hot and attractive and beautiful and attractive she is, I can't go higher than a B tier. Bald. 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 Sorry, I mean bald. <laughs> I mean, Mace Windu is already one of my favorite Star Wars characters. Maybe it's because he has a purple lightsaber, you know, just maybe. But regardless, he also has one of the best and overpowered moves in the whole game. This crazy boomerang lightsaber destroys everything in his path and is helpful in almost any scenario. It's also just super fun to use. I love bald and I love Mace Windu. S tier. What? Those Empire bastards stole our eggs? Our eggs? I absolutely refuse to do a stupid Yoda voice. But Misa loved Jar Jar Binks! <laughs> Misa not only loves his design, but Misa really loves his power. There are so many fun and crazy tricks he can pull off with his grappling hook tongue that Misa just can't get enough of. Watch this! Check this crazy shisha out. Misa already loved Gungaros, so obviously Misa loved Jar Jar Binks. Excuse me, move out of the way, Mace. S Tirza needs to save the room for Jar Jar Binks. As always, the Blues had no change to their power. However, they are way stronger than before and can even break through wood pretty well. They're also massive compared to normal Blues, which really makes them be effective here. They show up in so few levels of this game. I guess Anakin killed all the freaking younglings before he could use them in battle. Still, they're one of the better versions of the Blues, so they go and beat. They've clearly learned the lesson from Chuck being Lando because Captain Panaka is a completely unique bird. Funny enough, he shoots a triple shot just like Lando. His design is fine and his power is fine, so yeah, pretty easy B tier right there. Does anyone else irrationally love Kit Fisto? Like I've always thought he was cool despite knowing very little about him. I want you to Kit Fisto me! Actually, no, I, I really don't, why did I say that? Well, not only is he one of the coolest looking birds in the game, but he's just an upgraded Yoda. He destroys everything he touches, kind of like Willow from Angry Birds Stella. Kit Fisto also barely shows up in any levels, which sucks, but it's reasonable considering he's just too good. I love you, buddy. S tier. There's a few bonus characters that you can only get in the shop or at telepods. Look at the Ewok somehow got a spot, and I'm so proud of him for it. He's got the blues power, but there's nine of him instead of three. They're all pretty weak, but you can really get a huge spread on big levels that can come in handy. Plus, their design is surprisingly really cute. I like them a lot. A tier. Again, I debated including Carbonite Han Solo. It isn't a different bird, but he has a completely unique power. Plus he got his own telepod, so come on, it's only fair. He's stolen Iceberg's gimmick, how dare you! Is this why Iceberg isn't here anymore? That's it, I'll kill you! I'll freaking kill you! He's nearly useless in this game, since you don't get to follow him up with the blues ever. He also never goes away, which means he could slide right where you want him to, or just immediately become useless. You tried, but you made the most pointless power up ever. And you mess with Iceberg, D tier. Well, we're at the last leg of the list for today. The final update Star Wars 2 ever got was a Star Wars Rebels update. Not Clone Wars, not Rogue One, just the hit Disney XD show Rebels. Mostly because it was coming out at the right time. And I did watch Rebels as a kid. I don't remember it very well, but I did watch it. Somehow they decided to add six birds in this update, which is pretty huge considering the roster size. Not to mention that three of them were only available in the shop, which is really dumb and annoying. Regardless, the first bird is the main character, Ezra. Never cared for him in the show, and I don't like him here either. They each got some crazy new powers, and Ezra gets his laser that reflects off of any metal it touches forever. It's an interesting idea for sure, but it's not as useful as it sounds. C tier. Based on their personalities in the show, I feel like Kanan is more of a red, and Ezra is more of a chuck. But Kanan's move is to go faster than the speed of sound. It's a pretty insane power to have, like check out this boss level I can wipe out in one hit. It's easy to mess up, but can do some crazy damage otherwise. I don't really like how he looks though, so he's going in A. Definitely the coolest looking Rebels character is Zeb. Look at that guy, he's like a mix between Bomb, Terrence, and Big the Cat. And his powers reflect that. He has the strength of Terrence and a shockwave close to Bomb's explosions. It's a fun move, but as always, it's not as great as it sounds. I like him a lot though, so he's gotta be A tier. Hera is definitely the strangest one. She just places a minigun and leaves. 
Any pigs in sight get shot, but if there's even one little block in the way, that pig is safe. She hardly gets you any points as a result, but can be effective now and again. Still, what has Angerbirds come to when you launch a bird just to place a turret and then leave? I don't really like it. C tier. Sabine is one of my favorite rebel characters. She's a Mandalorian, and we all know these are just the coolest characters every time. Her power is a lot like Stella's in her game, where you bounce from platform to platform, but here you only select the first jump, and she places bombs on each spot. What's annoying is if you don't press anything, she doesn't even place a bomb. That's dumb and annoying. Still, she looks pretty cool, and her power is pretty fun to play around with. I'm saying B tier. Finally, last, and certainly least, is Chopper. If they never added Chopper, no one would have cared, truthfully. Of course though, he has the craziest power of them all. Don't you love getting jetpacks in games to just go anywhere? Yep, Chopper is best at going places you didn't even think were possible to go to. Not one level in this game was made for him in mind, so good luck finding a use for him. It's super fun to play around with, don't get me wrong, but in terms of usefulness, he isn't doing a thing. Sadly, we will end the list with a C tier. Well, I certainly haven't changed my mind. It was fun when Angry Birds was Transformers, I like seeing all the Rio birds, but no crossover will ever be as awesome as Angry Birds Star Wars. Seeing our favorite birds and Jedi combined was so much fun, and getting so many cool new powers and abilities was a blast. I always enjoyed just seeing how cool these guys look personally, and there's some really great designs as well. Star Wars is one of the last classic slingshot games too, which is sad. I think those crazy new powers show just how balls of the walls they are going here, but that's also because Star Wars 2 was super character based. Unlocking characters was an event in this game, and using telepods to try out characters in different scenarios is really fun too. I can't lie, some of these guys really make me mad. Those C-3PL levels are a nightmare to me. But I'll never forget you, Jar Jar. <sighs> Misa love you, Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. I know you guys love F-Tier. This list is going to be huge, so in the future I might just use F-Tier through the whole video. Today I thought we'd just end by converting the list here. You can see I've dispersed the old stuff and the new Star Wars stuff a bit, with the worst of the worst down at the bottom. That's right, I'm looking at you, Mighty Basketball! Let me know if you want me to just always include F tier or add it at the end like I did today. Thanks so much for watching. Angry Birds Star Wars continues to be one of the best crossovers ever, and I had a blast seeing some of my favorite Star Wars characters as birds. But what about Darth Maul? General Grievous? Jabba the Hutt? There are so many awesome characters we haven't covered yet, and I'm sick of it. Today we are not only covering more Angry Birds pigs, but finishing the second half of ranking every character in Angry Birds Star Wars. The birds are more prominently used as playable characters, which means all the enemies from the first game are pigs and there were playable pigs in the sequel, and we even have more unidentified pigs to discover from the cinematic trailer. Man, I miss the days of ranking 30 or so characters. Since the pigs have a much more prominent role in Star Wars 2, I'm going to start with the playable pigs there, then move to the pigs scene in the original Star Wars game. There's so freaking many, I don't even feel like naming them here. Let's just get into it. Without further ado, let's find out if we should join the pork side, or if we should instead set these freaks on fire with some formaldehyde. Angerbird Star Wars 2 marked the first time that pigs would be given a slingshot role alongside the birds throughout the story of the game. We now see both the birds and pigs perspective of major Star Wars events, which is great for the prequels considering how they end. The pork side is super important and I'm really glad they did it the way they did. The first playable pig of the cast is none other than Jango Fett. Mandalorians have always been cool characters and they absolutely nailed that look in Angerbirds too. He is just perfect. As tradition, they felt the need to make new Angry Birdified names for these characters, so this one is, of course, Django Fat. I wish I was that clever. He fittingly received a missile as well, launching wherever you tap and sending Django flying as a result. He's definitely not overpowered, but I do love him very much, so let's start our list with an A tier. The very next character was the freaking Emperor, or Darth Sidious for all the sticklers out there. Maybe you want to call him by his pig name, Emperor Piggleteen. They just keep getting better and better. I've always loved that he's just the king pig with a cloak on, and you can very clearly see that crown sticking through. Angerbirds tried to retcon this as a fork for some reason, but we don't have to listen to them. That's really, really stupid. He is playable in the sequel, using his signature lightning abilities, but we got to see him in the first game too. He's really the final boss, and once you break his shield, you get to use Darth Vader himself to beat the Emperor in the final level. That's a pretty awesome way to end the game. It is a little weird that he looks exactly the same in Star Wars 2 when he should really be younger with no robes, but I'll allow it. 
They compromise by making him wear a beak when he's in disguise, and that's honestly just a funny visual. I really don't like playing as a guy, but he is a cool final boss, so what the heck, give him a B tier. A little more obscure of an enemy here, the Droidica. I really hope that's how it's pronounced. They made it look a lot like the actual droids, but really nothing like a pig. Remove that snout and that's just a robot. Its power takes Yoda's spinning move and it ends with C-3PO's crumble move. If you haven't seen that first video, then you missed how much I hate that move. It's even more useless here, making this one of the most frustrating pigs to play as. He's only in the bonus levels too. These aren't bonuses, these are torture! I don't hate the concept or the design, but that doesn't keep him out of F tier. We're starting things early today. Our next droid is the Battle Droid. In Star Wars, these things have become the butt of every joke. It's rare to show one on screen without it being killed hilariously. Don't shoot, I'm not the commander. He he's the commander. Guess I'm the commander now. They're these tall, skinny droids that suck very hard, and I feel like the design of the Angry Birds just doesn't cut it. This thing looks almost nothing like the real deal, to the point that I forget they're the same character. To be fair, I really don't know how they could have done it better, but I digress. They're given the very basic blaster shots as their ability, which makes perfect sense, but is still very boring. They're weirdly also the main enemies in the birth side levels, but look unrecognizable from their own dang game. They're more green and pig-like, I guess just to make them feel like normal Angry Birds enemies and to help them stand out, but it's all very strange. I'm thinking D tier. And of course, the fan favorite red battle droid, how could they make a game without these guys? A reskin with a near identical ability to a character I already don't care about? My favorite, F tier. Here we go, now we're freaking talking. One of the coolest characters ever now made even cooler as a pig. They made an amazing teaser for the game with Darth Maul that I watched over and over as a kid. I couldn't get enough of this stuff. Everyone wanted a double sided lightsaber because of this guy. Who wouldn't want to be Darth Moore? Yes, you heard me right. What the hell does more mean? Anyways, he's got a great lightsaber ability, looks crazy cool, and is one of my favorite Star Wars characters. I'm definitely saying S tier. The best they could do was Count Dodo? Count Dudu was right there! I've never cared much for the guy, and look at him here. He's just a pig with facial hair. He gets to be the final boss of the main story and gets Mace Windu's overpowered boomerang ability. I really wish someone cooler got to have this one, but I guess I shouldn't complain too much. You'll always be Count Dudu in my eyes, so have fun and beat here. Our one and only female playable pig in Star Wars is Zam Wessel, also known as Zam Weasel. Somehow, Ham Wessel was right under their damn snouts and they changed the last name to Weasel. She's not a weasel, she's a hog, you hoodlum! If you don't remember this character from the movies, I don't blame you, but it makes sense they've added her here. She gets a whole dang boss fight to herself, as well as the grappling hook ability in her playable form. Definitely was not expecting her to be the pig version of Jar Jar Wings. Misa miss him so freaking much. Zam Weasel is honestly just fine. I neither hate or love her. She really makes me wish there were more female villains in Star Wars. Oh well, B tier. Boba Fat takes after his dad, just as fat as ever. Again, Mandalorians are amazing, so you gotta love the OG. If you've never seen the Boba's delivery short they made for him, you need to pause this video and watch it. It's quite possibly one of the greatest animations in Angry Birds history. I've seen it at least 50 times. He's one of the most prominent pigs in Angry Birds Star Wars, appearing in both games. He's just a better version of his father, firing two missiles rather than just one, and he really shines in the first game. There's a whole dang level pack titled Boba Fett Missions that was unlocked after finding five jetpacks throughout the levels or just buying the pack. He's a unique boss that flies in each stage and can be used to deal some damage when beaten. I've always loved Boba Fett, and considering he's just a better Django, then why not? Put him in S. Speaking of my favorites, our four-armed quad-wielding robot is finally here. General Grievous? No, they had a much better name for him. He should now be known as my own personal nickname in high school, General Grunter. You literally can't make this stuff up. Of course he was given all four lightsabers and they absolutely nailed the look of him here. He is perfect as perfect can be. He's also one of my favorite telepods I own, so let's look at my collection once again. Let me know which pig telepods you had. My best ones are Grievous, Jabba, Maul, and Piggleteen. I got the essentials, so I'm happy with my collection. I'm not really sure if Grievous is a fan favorite or if I've always just had a weird fascination with him, but he's gotta be S for me. We've made it to the face of the franchise. The ultimate Star Wars baddie that takes your breath away every time he appears on screen. The one, the only, Lard Vader. Man, that name really takes the wind out of the sails. 
Darth Vader. It's Darth Vader. Getting to play as him in the sequel is one of the greatest joys of an Angerous fan, just absolutely decimating everything in his path. He is so fun to use and even more fun to look at. But that's only one look at the guy. He appears as the enemy of the original Star Wars game. In certain levels, he uses the Force to control platforms around him, making for a really cool gameplay idea I haven't seen since. He's also part of the final boss, which leads to the amazing reveal of Old Bird Anakin inside the helmet. He works with Luke to take out the Emperor in an awesome final confrontation, and really gets the most development out of any other character in the game. Now, I know many of you probably expect me to say, he's not a pig, F tier. But I think we can make an exception for freaking Darth Vader. Under the mask, he's Anakin, but Vader is basically a completely different character. He's pure evil, and he's awesome. Just listen to this final cutscene in Star Wars 2. They nailed Vader in both of these games, and it would be messed up to not give him an S tier too. I kind of promised we'd talk about Anakin too, as his third evolution puts him on the pork side. It's the true edgelord version of the character, and honestly, he looks awesome. But let's be real, he's not a pig, F tier. Look, he is cool, okay? It was dumb not to rank him in the last video. I'll put him an A on that list. I hope that makes up for it. We've now made it through all the main playable pigs from the game, but we ain't even close to finish. There were a ton of bonus pigs as well, some from the original game and others completely new. And then we also got Hologram Piggletine. I really don't know why this is its own character. They definitely should've just given this ability to him from the get-go. He starts as a hologram and can fly through obstacles, then becomes a normal guy with lightning powers on activation. There's a surprising amount of scenarios this can be helpful for. It's a cool idea, but really weird as a separate character. C tier. The official punching bag of the Star Wars series is, of course, the Stormtroopers. They've never amounted to anything, they're a useless army with a recognizable face. Of course, they're the main enemy type seen in the first game, so that's cool, but they also got to be playable in the sequel. I'm so happy for them. I love that they reference their terrible aim and their power, firing randomly on activation. Let's just be honest, these guys are iconic, and you just love to kill them. They're my favorite enemy in the game, and I think they deserve an A tier. In a similar vein, we have the Biker Scout. They're perfectly fine as an enemy in the first game, but really got the chance to shine in the sequel. Sure, he's the counterpart to Pod Racing Anakin, but he gets his own little speeder bike and looks pretty freaking cute riding that thing too. What a cutie. C for cutie. The Shadow Trooper gets the saddest combinations of power yet. None other than Hologram Piggletine is back with a Stormtrooper weapon. Being able to pass through objects lets you attack nearly any part of a stage but the Stormtrooper weapon is so weak it hardly makes a difference. The Shadow Troopers in actual Star Wars are a pretty cool concept. Inverting the colors of a Stormtrooper is just the perfect amount of edgy, but a combination of two okay powers leaves us with an okay B tier. Trust me, we're nearly through with the Troopers, but we gotta cover the Shock Trooper real quick first. We never really got official clone trooper designs in this game. The closest thing we got is this one. I assume from the name that they'd have a lightning ability, but nah, they just shoot like every other stupid trooper. Where's the Cooper Troopers at? D tier. We're back to the enemies first seen in Angry Birds Star Wars that were made playable for the sequel. If you've ever wondered who's piloting the TIE Fighters, look no further than this guy. He's kinda just a fancy looking shadow trooper, and wouldn't you know it, he just shoots lasers? Talk about exceeding expectations. F tier. Tell me why they made the Royal Guards look so freaking cool and gave them about 2 milliseconds of screen time in the movies. That red cloak is so cool! Sure, they're fun as enemies, but in the sequel they got a completely unique ability. It's a little strange to be honest, but basically they use their forks as a spear and cling to objects for dear life. It has its benefits, I guess, but really I should just be thankful they didn't give this guy a gun like the other clones. I'm putting them in A because they're the coolest kids in school. Finally, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Jabba the freaking hog! When he appeared in the first game, he looked absolutely insane. They did not hold back even a little. Also, I love you slightly. How could they not make him playable in the sequel? He's like the greatest Star Wars character to ever exist. He'd already been done dirty by not having a boss fight in the first one. He is so unbelievably thick with 300 C's that the whole galaxy shakes as he makes contact with the structure. If you thought Terrence was strong, he just met his freaking maker. He also sticks his tongue out as he flies because of course he does. He's my big obese little boy! Also, if you've not seen the monstrosity of the plushie they planned for this guy, take a look at your freaking screen. What I wouldn't give to cuddle with that thing every night before bed. 
Jabba is peak Star Wars, and they have truly given him the respect he deserves here. That's one fat S tier. <sighs> Anyways, we also got the stupid ugly Tusken Raiders. They were the first ever enemy pigs in Angry Birds Star Wars, but never really made an impact other than that. I must say their huge pouty lips are pretty hilarious. I can understand if you like the guy. He received a unique ability as well, calling in a freaking sniper on the rooftop to take out the president. That's a kill. Sniper, get down! It's a pretty fun idea, and I like that the Tusken Raider flinging virtually doesn't amount to anything, and some random guy off screen is the real hero. What the heck, let's put him in B tier. Let's finish out the Playable Pigs by moving on to the Rebels chapter of the game. It's the stepchild of Angra Star Wars, honestly, despite just how many characters were added. We got as many pigs as we did birds, and you can tell they were sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel to do so. A prime example of this is the ATDP pilot. The birds were all main characters from the show, and our pig Ezra variant is just a generic pilot. I must say, I actually kind of really like how he looks, and clearly he loves Zelda as much as I do. It's too bad he never got to actually pilot an ATDP, which would have made for pretty amazing power, but oh well. That laser is super powerful and always a joy to use. I think I'll put him in B. We got a real character here, Sicarto Visago. Out of all the enemies in Rebels, this is a strange choice, but remember these levels were based solely on the first little handful of episodes. He gets to throw three time bombs across the stage, which is actually a really powerful attack. It's like three mini bomb birds going off in multiple locations. I've always liked the additions they did for Rebels because their powers are genuinely really good. A weird character with a good power sounds like a B to me. And then the next character literally doesn't have a name. This is Visago's droid. Can't you see the resemblance? Aw, he looks just like his Pop Pop. Guess whose favorite ability got an upgrade? I got an upgrade. <laughs> this is literally C-3PO but with like 20 little pieces rather than 5. It's certainly more helpful but absolutely just as frustrating. Remember how Chopper could literally fly wherever he wanted? Yeah, that's how a droid should be done. This is just pathetic. D tier. There's no way I'm wasting coins to try out the Imperial Officer. He doesn't even have a freaking name. Rather than having just a few bullets to aim, this guy can literally shoot anywhere you want until he crashes. That sounds awesome! What the hell? Why didn't I waste my coins on this guy? Like I said, the Rebels characters really got cool powers. I'm sad to see we didn't get more Star Wars characters after them. Anyways, I think the power could be very useful, but it's such a boring Star Wars character. C tier. Finally, an actual Rebels character. Agent Callus hates the Rebels and loves the helmet that perfectly covers his sideburns. When launched, he's got a couple stormtroopers following him, and when activated, a whole army is released. Sure, we already saw this with Wicket on the bird side, but the power just works so perfectly for a horde of stormtroopers. They are extremely weak, and it's tough to find levels this is helpful for, but the idea alone makes me like it a lot. I'm going back to B. Finally, the big bad and final boss of the bird side is the Inquisitor. They absolutely nailed the look of this guy, and it certainly helps that he was already green. He, of course, gets his very awesome Darth Maul inspired blade, and he is definitely OP in the game. I sadly only got to try him out twice, I'm fresh out of coins these days, but you can basically make him go anywhere on stage and swing his lightsaber around. It has a huge range and cuts through objects like butter. It makes me very sad I couldn't try him out more stages, I kinda feel like I wasted him here but I absolutely see his potential, and he looks very awesome. S tier. All right, we've done it. All 27 Porkside characters have gotten their spotlight. Good thing we're not even freaking close to finish. Star Wars 2 still had characters throughout the game that never had a playable role. I'd say the one that deserved it the most was without a doubt, Sebulba. Sure, he's just a pod racing guy, but think about how easy he could have been to add. Replace a biker scout with Sebulba and his pod racer, and you're set. Instead, he appears throughout the second chapter and as the final boss. I guess that's pretty generous for Sebulba. I take it all back. He's just a weird guy. I hate you now, Sebulba. C tier. An even less interesting character is Newt Gunray, the boss of the third chapter. I'm sure he's important to something in the movie, but here he's just a chiseled pig with a stupid Scarlet Witch crown. What kind of parents name their kid Newt? At least let him go by Nathaniel. F tier. This is what they call a vulture droid? This is just a poor man's TIE fighter. This is what you get when you ask for a TIE fighter and mom says you have a TIE fighter at home. That's by far the worst thing we've seen today. F tier. Well, what do you know, we get to meet Newt's best friend, Rune. The only positive thing about this freak is that the blue looks cooler. Have fun with your new friends and F tier, loser. Wanna see the sad excuse for clone troopers we got in this game? 
They didn't even bother to make any. They thought kids wouldn't get it. And said these are stormtroopers with fake bird beaks. I would have never understood they were trying to be good without fake bird beaks. Thank you so much. Just kidding. I was wearing a fake bird beak too. Get fake bird beak, dumbass. F tier. Super battle droids look really, really cool. A tier. What a perfectly stupid angry Star Wars design. They literally took a spider droid and gave a mustache pig's mustache. It's really fun to look at and especially fun to kill. S tier. Give it up for one of the ugliest designs in Star Wars, somehow made more ugly by Angry Birds. Killing these things in game is actually doing them a favor for once. Obviously F tier. The pigs actually fight these guys, but they're clearly not birds, right? They definitely look more like pigs, but who can say? Maybe this guy's a turtle or something. Either way, it's nearly as disgusting as the Genosian we just looked at, and that's impressive. Kinda endearing though, D tier. Last one, thank god. They somehow made Rodians freaking adorable in the Rebels levels. Let me remind you, this is what the typical Star Wars Rodian looked like. Yeah, not pretty. Yet, I can't get enough of these little guys. Makes me genuinely sad to kill them. As always, not like I'm not gonna brutally murder if I get a chance. Put these guys in A tier. The final, final, final Angry Birds Star Wars 2 character shows up in a single cutscene and makes no impact on anything, and I hate him, and I want to move on now, please, so get out of my way, virgin F tier. Now we have our own little trilogy of characters, only ever seen as toys. I told you guys, I'm freaking thorough. I'm not looking to miss any pigs any damn time soon. These three coincidentally are pretty important Star Wars creatures that really don't make sense as birds or pigs. Feast your eyes on Reek, who uh, certainly fits that description. If it wasn't for that snout, I really wouldn't call this thing a pig. He's a full bone triceratops with arms and legs, and he's very, very strange. Sort of funny though, C tier. We also got the Rancor, who, uh, yeah, that's definitely more pig-like. I really would have loved to see this guy in the official art for the game. I already sort of liked the Reek, and the Rancor is leagues more entertaining than that loser. A tier. Our toy trilogy ends with the Wampa. That is just pathetic, man. Just like the sequel children Star Wars, we end with a very mediocre D tier. Before we move on to the enemies from the first game, we have to revisit the Gantina scene from the trailer. We successfully identified Muftak in our last video, but there are way more pigs in here than there's any right to be. Here's the plan. Any generic randos are getting left out. Deal with it. And everyone else we've managed to identify can join the list. I think that's fair. I'd like to start our first guy by putting the name up on screen for you. Yeah, that's a name. If I sat on my keyboard, I bet I could get pretty close to that. Send in your guesses on how to pronounce this shit. My best guess is Cardu Sai Malak. He really just looks like they made the devil real in Star Wars. I would pay good money to have a plush or telepod of this guy. He looks awesome. A tier. Our next freak is Hem Dazen. Is no Star Wars character allowed to be named like Jeff or something? I like to think this guy looked normal and then got sat on by Jabba one day and was never the same. He's funny, but nothing special. C tier. Then we got to see the whole Cantina band, and if you are curious, their band name is Fingering Dan and the Nude Models. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyways, if these guys are responsible for that bang and cantina music, then there's no doubt about it. I freaking love jizz! Huh? Yeah. What's wrong? You didn't know that jazz is called jizz in Star Wars? Clearly you don't know Star Wars like I do. Anyways, Fingering Dan and the Nude Models go in S tier. Next is Cabe, Moftak's little baddie best friend. Bats kind of already have pig noses, so this is perfect. I honestly love her just as much as Muftak. This is peak Star Wars alien design. Huh, I hope one day Cable will be mine. A tier. If you've ever wondered who got his pickle cut off in the trailer, it's none other than Ponda Baba. He looks absolutely disgusting, but I must say, I'm kind of craving a pickle right now. God damn it, now I gotta wait the rest of this video before I can get myself a damn pickle. Thanks a lot, Ponda Baba. F tier. Wait, his friend is named Dr. Evison? Like, he's got a PhD and he's in a bar defending his pickle bro? Go get a job, loser! F tier! Apparently we can identify the bartender as Woo Her, or um, I hardly know her, but you cannot tell me this guy ain't just a freaking pig. That's not a Star Wars character, that's just a freaking minion pig from Angie Bird! F tier! And now we've gotten to the point where there are clearly important pigs in here, but I have no idea who they are. I once again reached out to the Star Wars nerds who watched my videos to help nail down a few of these guys. This Twilight pig is pretty front and center, but no one really thought she was a specific Star Wars character. Lame. D tier. 
Thanks to this comment, we can identify a few more of the cast. Thank you very much. I'm Nick. Wait, what the hell? No, I'm not. I'm Jake. Jake! Whatever, it doesn't matter. This hooded pig seems to be Trento Duaba, and that certainly makes sense. Add it to the wiki, you cowards. Nick clearly knows his stuff. The people in the comments really took a liking to the guy. Anyways, now that we properly identify this guy, we can say for sure that he is weird and ugly. D tier. He also identified the Tonica sisters, most well known for their giant mound of fake hair on their heads. They look way better as pigs, I can tell you that much. C tier. Now, there were a few more I wanted to mention, but wasn't confident enough to rank. Some people said this guy was Bib Fortuna, and it kind of looks similar, but really not close enough. Bib Fortuna would have been too busy at Jabba's palace anyways. I wanted to show you this Bantha, but I refused to rank it as a pig. It really doesn't look like a bird or a pig, which is definitely unique for these games. I didn't want to leave it behind, but I also really don't think it belongs on the tier list. Sorry little buddy, you do look pretty awesome, I must say. Someone said their friend James was in there, and someone spotted Paul, so that was pretty impressive. Here are a few more comments that were actually helpful, that correctly identified some of the characters in here. Alright, let's move on now. Do you guys believe Han Solo or Greedo? Said McClunky. McClunky. Because I think Han Solo said it first. Yeah, Greedo literally showed up in one cutscene to get shot in the face by Chuck. But if it makes you feel any better, they were literally going to give him his own plush. A character that showed up in one cutscene deserves a plushie? Now that's what I call McClunky. C tier. Alright, final stretch people. We're finally back into the first game to look at the remaining enemies that didn't return in the sequel. One of which being the TIE Fighter, who didn't exist yet in the prequels I guess. Something I've always loved about the first game is how faithful it is to the original trilogy. From the screen swipes to the breathtaking backgrounds, and even down to the gosh dang character designs. So I've always really hated the TIE Fighter because of that. I definitely get making these look more like pigs so you know they're enemies, but come on. There are other droids and ships that totally got the point across without turning them into a literal pig. I just hate them. F tier. And then again, when they turn Darth Vader's head into a TIE Fighter, that's pretty freaking funny. I also just think it looks way better. If the TIE Fighters have to be pig heads, then I guess I'm pretty okay with this one. B tier. Well, if it isn't the bowling ball headed pig himself. Seriously, is that what they were going for with the Death Star Trooper? Because that's genuinely all I can think about when I see these guys. They look like they cut a bowling ball in half and stuck it on their head. If that is not what they were going for, then this is very bad. C tier. While the Imperial officers do look quite dapper, they're also just pigs in uniform. Not the worst, just boring. D tier. Well, if it isn't Grand Moff Tarkin himself. Or like Grand Muff Tarkin. Am I right or am I right? I have always had a preference toward the mustache pig, so it really doesn't matter what he looks like as long as he's here. It's the perfect role for him to play, too. Mustache pig is just as obedient to King Pig as the Mothman is to Vader. He was once going to look more like this regular elderly pig as seen through this early toy they made of him. I am very glad they gave mustache pig a chance to shine, and I'm putting Moftash in A tier. How could there be levels on Hoth without the classic snow troopers? I love that you can see the outline of their snout underneath the veil. This one just turned out so amazing. Let's put it on the same level as the Stormtrooper with an A tier. Another named character, Maximilian Beers. I can't believe it, my favorite Star Wars character! Who is this guy again? Eh, who cares. It's weird he has a name when he's just a minion pig you see throughout the Hoth levels. He looks fine, C tier. Sadly, we don't get to rank the AT-ATs themselves, instead we're left with the stupid pigs that pilot them. The red pork side logo on their heads really helped make them have some bit of intrigue, but yeah, pretty boring. D tier. See, the Viper Probe Droid is exactly what I was talking about before during the TIE Fighter section. It's still very much a pig, but perfectly combined with the droid we know and love. They're the first flying enemy of the game, which is something we'll see again very soon. I love how creepy these things are, and they're really satisfying to blow up. One of my favorites of the enemies so far. I'm thinking S tier. The second half of the Hoth chapter pits the rebels against this poor species of pigs known as the Minox. It's pretty funny how insignificant they were to the Empire Strikes Back, considering just how many levels there are with these freaks. The tail is really what takes it too far. I would kill this thing IRL if I saw one. Again, I like that they're flying enemies here. It's something fairly rare in Angry Birds games. Let's put them in B. You haven't lived until you've seen the Fat Minoc. Just when I thought the Fat Pig couldn't get any better, they combined it with a freaking Minoc. There are a few Star Wars characters, period, that are better than this guy. George Lucas could really learn a thing or two from this game. Obviously S tier. Wow, we're really getting down to it. If you bought the extra Yoda levels, you got to face up against the unique voodoo pigs. 
Are these things even alive? I'm pretty sure yours is using these for training. Well, I do love their button eyes, so what the heck, have a generous C tier. And of course, Vader got a voodoo form as well. Uh, maybe it should be Booter. That really rolls off the tongue. Is it just me, or does Darth Vooter look really freaking awesome? His lame ass sword is really the only thing keeping him an A for me. After defeating the fat Minoc, it's revealed that you were inside the Exogorth pig the whole time. Wait, if we went out his mouth, then we must have entered? Oh man, I got a bad feeling about this. Anyways, the Alaskan bullworm meets a green stinky ugly fat pig and we're left with the freak of nature, so obviously S tier. And lastly, it felt fitting to end things on the Death Star. I get it, the Death Star isn't alive, but they certainly went out of their way to make this thing look like a pig with a personality. It's the whole dang focus of the second chapter, where we get to blow the whole place up, and then the final chapter has it being rebuilt, only for us to destroy it again. Kick a pig boys down, why don't you? I really hate how they gave him this big smiling mouth in these cutscenes, but otherwise they did an amazing job capturing the look of the Death Star here. It's such an iconic location that makes too much sense to have a pig nose slapped onto it. Let's end our list by giving the Death Star the S it truly deserves. I really can't believe I just ranked 66 freaking Star Wars pigs. I basically just executed Order 66 on the Angry Birds. I always thought the birds in these games were way cooler, and after ranking both the birds and the pigs, yeah, I was definitely right. A lot of the pigs are really forgettable. They made sure to make each bird feel special, and every other character they slapped a pig nose on and called it a day. I just find the random enemies to be much more bland. And that's sad, considering the awesome playable characters we got to start with. All the main characters on the pork side are genuinely incredible, and they somehow managed to make them all look awesome as freaking Angry Birds pigs. That is seriously impressive. Despite loving the birds more, I would not be surprised to hear that Darth Vader, General Grievous, Darth Maul, or the Fat Minoc was your favorite Angry Birds Star Wars character. They make this massive list all worth it in the end. Let me know your favorite Star Wars pig, and let me know if you prefer the bird side or the pork side. I'm pretty curious. Hey, thanks for watching this compilation. I know it's two videos a lot of people have already seen, but maybe it's been a while since you've seen them. And I want a convenient way to watch both back to back and put this whole Star Wars series into one big video. Also, I'm working on two big projects right now and I'm on vacation, so I didn't really have a video to update this weekend anyways. Let me know if there are other compilations you want to see, and I also wanted to make sure to thank my current members and not just show you footage of the members that were members at the time of those videos coming out. So thank you Leland, Patrick Byerjan, Brightstreak, MD Switchy, Dolphin Rider H2O, Dojo Master, Lavatain, Jasper TV, Keep, Omega, Gall Guy, Jeff the Legend, Cheaper Ying, Gotham, Marie, Callum Ford, Dawnstar Plays, Peacock, OK. Cyro was taken, Pika Girl for You, Kristoff Creations Cameron, Eric G. Deeb, Herskill Banenner, Bo Vanderlan, Mora Mora, Checky, Eduardo Santiago, Green Man Yeah, Batty LV, Mr. Odell, and stuff happens sometimes. There's a red and yellow variant that they There's a red and yellow There's a red and yellow variant but There's a red and yellow variant that may make me hungry for ketchup and mustard, but makes me oh so happy to ruthlessly Oh my god. There's a red and yellow variant that may make me hungry for ketchup and mustard, but it makes me oh so happy to ruthlessly decimate and the <sighs> There's a red and yellow variant that may There's a red and yellow variant that may make me want to... There's a red and yellow variant that may make me hungry for ketchup and mustard, but makes me oh so happy to ruthlessly decimate <laughs> Oh my god. Ruthlessly decimate Ruthlessly decimate Ruthlessly decimate There's a red and yellow variant that make there's a red and yellow variant that may make me hungry for ketchup and mustard, but makes me oh so happy to ruthlessly decimate in game. Obviously, these go in D tier. Freak you, I can't!